Good morning. Today is Thursday in the third week of Easter, the 30th of April. In the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, let us feel your compassion more readily during these days when, by your gift, we have known it more fully, so that those you have freed from the darkness of error may cling more firmly to the teachings of your truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. We continue our readings from the sixth chapter of St John's Gospel about Jesus being the bread of life, uh, John 6, verses 44 to 51. Jesus said to the crowd, No one can come to me unless he is drawn by the Father who sent me, and I will raise him up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, They will all be taught by God, and to hear the teaching of the Father and learn from me is to come to me. Not that anybody has seen the Father except the one who comes from God. He has seen the Father. I tell you most solemnly, Everybody who believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the desert and they're dead. But this is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that a man may eat it and not die. I am the living bread which has come down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I shall give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> the people listening to Jesus, and he was speaking to them in their language, in his language, probably Aramaic, would have heard very definite connotations in the language that Jesus used. I'm thinking of the second part where he talks about you et manna, from our fathers had manna in the desert and died. Um, but then he goes on to say, uh, I am the bread, I'm the living bread, I'm the bread of life. And then he goes on to say, and this is my flesh. The very phrase is, the bread that I shall give is my flesh. Manna was not it actually itself bread, but became bread in the sense of the staple diet. And it's what survived, helped the Israelites survive. Uh, during their 40 years wandering in the desert. The word for, that Jesus uses for, for flesh uh, in Greek is sarx, um, but in Hebrew is bazaar, meaning meat. Um, and you have to, in a sense, almost go behind their under, the Hebrew's understanding, very simple biology. If you had meat without blood, it was dead, and if you had meat with blood in it, it had life, because meat plus blood equals living. Very simple biology. And Jesus says, uh, you must eat my flesh and drink my blood, pointing therefore to this idea of life. But the word bizarre is a very basic word, meaning meat. Perhaps if you substituted words like steak or meat stew, you will hear the very strong claim and how open to misunderstanding it was uh, to the Jews who were listening to him. Was he really uh, talking about cannibalism? No, but he was talking about meat being his flesh, but in the sense of bread, bread of life. So the bread becomes his flesh, and that's why this whole passage, chapter 6, is all about the inauguration of the Eucharist. That Jesus gives out the bread and says, this is my body, this is my flesh, this is me, and I give you life. Because my body and my blood, in the form of bread and wine, which becomes my body and blood, gives you eternal life. The disciples we will see today and in the future readings struggle with this. And many leave at this point. They find they can't accept the teaching. 
that they have to eat the bread and wine, the body and blood of Jesus, to find eternal life. But Peter comes in, we'll see this in tomorrow's reading, and says, I believe. So between today and tomorrow, it's a time for reflection, our belief in the Eucharist. But the bottom line for us is that Jesus is the giver of life. And he gives us life because it's the will of his Father who made us, our Creator, to give us life. And he talks about that only he can reveal the Father and the Father's love for us. So we go away from today's gospel, pondering the love of God for us, the love that God has given us, his son, and that we participate in the very life of the Trinity by our Eucharistic uh, sharing, that by eating his flesh and blood, bread and wine of the Eucharist, we receive ourselves eternal life. We turn now to our bidding prayers. The response for our bidding prayers is, Lord, stay always with us. Lord, stay always with us. Let us offer our prayer to Christ, who rose from the dead and is living always in his church. Lord, stay always with us. Lord, you triumphed over sin and death. Be present in our midst with your eternal life. Lord, stay always with us. Come to us with your untiring strength and reveal in our lives the loving kindness of God. Lord, stay always with us. You alone can reconcile, reconcile men and create a new spirit within them. End the conflicts which divide our world. Lord, stay always with us. Deepen our faith in your final victory. Let us find strength in the hope of your coming. Lord, stay always with us. We say together the prayer that Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. We pray. Almighty, ever-living God, make our hearts more open to your love in these days of Eastertide, when you have made known to us the depth of that love. You have rescued us from the darkness of error. Make us adhere more firmly to the teachings of your truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Bye. Have a good day.